for two consecutive days on December 20 and 21, 2022, Natural Justice organized a workshop in Port Harcourt, Nigeria to review and validate a recent study it had commissioned to determine the state of human and environmental rights in Africa's biggest democracy. The workshop was attended by civil society organizations, representatives from the academia, media, Nigerian Bar Association, and community-based organizations. The study, which was also carried out to seek ways of protecting human and environmental rights defenders in the country, identified several factors responsible for rampant violation of rights in the country. They include limited awareness about existing legislations on human and environmental rights protection and the inability of citizens to explore them to their advantage. Nigeria has um, a myriad of laws, regulations on environmental that protects the environment. Uh, Section 20 of the Nigerian Constitution has said that uh, the government has the mandate to protect, safeguard the Nigerian environment. And to do this, the government has created um, institutions like NESRIA, NOSRIA, and even the Federal Ministry of Environment and other state ministries of environment. The challenge we've seen is that people are unaware that there's this enforcement mechanism to enforce and implement um, environmental rights in Nigeria. We are also talking about the need to ensure that those who are at the forefront of defending human and environmental rights are in themselves protected and defended. So that's essentially what the workshop is about. Other factors militating against protection of human and environmental rights in the study dwell on public policy and institutional barriers as well as legal and jurisprudential challenges. There should be greater access to justice, especially for the poor and uh, communities that are unable to fend for themselves or to pursue such cases, that there is no reason why we should always look up to the Netherlands and you know, other countries to essentially um, implement and uh, enforce rights that we could as a country uh, assist our citizens to enforce. We also found out that there's need for some paralegal training of the environmental and human rights defenders to support their work. Another capacity of, uh, that is needed that is the area of, um, of funding. Uh, funding is a challenge. Uh, another aspect of it is also insecurity around the communities. Most of the communities where these issues are happening is uh, even to have access to them is a challenge. So environmental and human rights defenders are finding it difficult to even um, inspect the violations in these communities. The workshop adopted a socially inclusive approach giving room for the participation of youths, women and several interest groups, all of whom made useful contributions to the study carried out by a team of legal and environmental experts. The review and validation of the study were carried out through presentations, expert group discussion, keynote addresses and plenary sessions. A salient observation at the workshop was that all forms of barriers to the protection of environmental and human rights had made access to justice an uphill task for victims and defenders of human rights in Nigeria. Hence the call for concerted efforts to enforce the inalienable rights of Nigerians as enshrined in several legislations and the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Given the enormity of human rights abuses and violations in Nigeria, particularly in the oil producing communities and challenges confronting environmental rights defenders all over the world, sources will require a robust effort and resolute commitment by all concerned groups and individuals in order to lay a solid base for the collaborative effort that are required to address these daunting challenges. Participants at the workshop also frowned at the reluctance of the Nigerian authorities to key into the global energy transition from fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy. Over the years, Nigeria has had to contend with many negative impacts of climate change, such as rising sea levels and temperatures, 
drought and desertification, perennial flooding and biodiversity loss. This scenario is blamed on the country's over-reliance on hydrocarbons, which have been largely responsible for climate injustice. With the review and validation of the preliminary study on the state of human and environmental rights in Nigeria, the research team now has a broader scope that will be reflected in the final report. Mike Karipo, Program Manager of Natural Justice says, it signals the commencement of a process intended to build an empowered network of human and environmental rights defenders who will be fully involved in activities outlined for serious engagements across Nigeria's six geopolitical zones. We need to get our people together, working together again, building movements, strong movements that will um, create change, that will cause people to work. Uh, that has been lacking in Nigeria and that needs to be revived. We, we need to build a Nigerian movement on environmental issues to protect the environment, democratize development and deal with the issue of climate change. Both the findings and action plan enunciated by stakeholders in the recent study commissioned by Natural Justice brings innovation and novelty to the campaign against human and environmental rights abuses which date back to the days of military rule in Nigeria. One major focus of the action plan of the project is the need to build resilience for victims and defenders of human and environmental rights in Nigeria. What do we want? Climate justice. When do we want it? Now.